announce this, the main event of the evening, and it's going to be the IBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds, featuring the native son fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Babut Shumanov, against Byron Mitchell, a former world champ who hails from Ozark, Arkansas, living in Orlando, Florida. And here is the former champ making his way in, Byron Mitchell, decked out in the red trunks with the white trim, white shoes. He took the fight on kind of short notice, but he was glad to uh, get over here and get in the fight. You see, he's coming off a win in February. He stopped Zach Walters, uh, who retired in the sixth round of that fight in Buffalo, New York. And this is the type of guy, Benny, that always stays ready to fight. Absolutely, and I'll never forget it. This is the first man to ever knock down Joe Calzaghe. That was a very impressive performance in 2003, and that was in a, that second round was one of the finest second rounds I've ever seen in boxing. Very exciting second round. Well, he can put on a show, and here's Jimmy Smith for the ring announcement. Now making his way into the arena from Shimkent, Kazakhstan, attempting his first world championship, Bay Boot. Shumanov! And here comes Beboot. Of course, he's from this area, even though he's fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, under the tutelage of our good friend Steve Rollins from Australia. But uh, Shumanov is a terrific fighter. He's 7-0 coming in here, undefeated, and getting a shot at this uh, IBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. And people say, well, what do these lesser titles mean? Well, they mean that you're going to get ranked in the, in the more important titles. But this is a huge title fight and a big thing for this area of Kazakhstan. As you take a look at the recent opponents, he's uh, coming off a victory uh, in last December when he won a unanimous decision over Epi Mendoza in uh, Bellevue, Washington. So uh, Beboot is a big, big uh, favorite here. He's a very proud fighter and... Uh, had a tremendous uh, amateur career. They know him here. Absolutely. And here's a guy again. In eight professional fights, his opponents have 177 wins. That's amazing. Here's a guy in 2004. He represented Kaz Kazakhstan in the Olympics. He ended up beating light heavyweight champ EBA, now current EBA light heavyweight champion, Alexei Kuzemski, who's now 16-0. He broke his hand in that fight and lost the next round, fighting one-handed against Ishan Jildren Tarhan of Turkey. And the score on that was 19-27. Was and 27. But again, this is a guy that when he stepped up the pro, his style, Colonel, is ideal for the pro game. This guy's in the hurt business. All right, let's get it started. And here's, once again, as I ring announcer, Jimmy Smith. Jim Kent, Kazakhstan, let's get it on! Main event, 12 rounds for the IBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. The third man inside the ring, refereeing his 141st world title fight from Atlantic City, New Jersey, Steve Smoker. The principals fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks. His official weight, 187 pounds, with a professional record of 27 wins, four losses, one draw, 24 wins by knockout. The former two-time world champion from Orlando, Florida, Byron Mitchell! His opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, weighed in at 173.2 pounds, with a professional record of seven wins, no losses, five wins by knockout. This former Olympian, now ranked number 16 by the WBC, number 8 by the WBA, number 9 by the WBO. And now, after only seven professional fights, he makes his first attempt at a world championship. Now hailing from Las Vegas, Nevada, Bay Boot Shumanov! <laughs> Referee Steve Smoker to give final instructions. 
All right, as Steve calls the combatants into the center of the ring for the final instructions, we'll tend to you. It's a 10-point muscle system. No standing eight counts. Please, count. please obey my no commands. Respect the bell. And, no and be above all, protect yourself round. at all only times. Touch gloves. Stop the fight. God bless you both. By the way, this fight is not only for the IBA Light Heavyweight Championship. The WBO Asia Pacific is on the line. As you take a look at the tail of the tape, it'll tell us a few things. That uh, Shumanoff is two and a half inches taller. He's about a pound, uh, well, he's, he's quite a few pounds lighter as uh, Mitchell came in uh, really at 190 and got him down to 187 for this fight. He's 10 years younger and uh, three inches in uh, reach advantage for Shumanoff. So to tell you about the other titles that are involved here, the WBO Asia Pacific, the WBC Asian Boxing Council, and the interim PABA title also on the line along with the IBA 175 pound title and again uh, these are very important titles because they lead to uh, bigger title shots and the bigger sanctioning uh, bodies around the world so it's Shumanov fighting out of Las Vegas from here in Kazakhstan in the black trunks holding that left hand down as he digs down low to Byron Mitchell Byron Mitchell able to take this fight on short notice when uh, fellow Colombian Alejandro Barrio yeah, Naco Barrio had some visa problems back in Colombia, so he was not able to go ahead and come into the fight. Byron Mitchell, again, like you mentioned, he's always ready to fight. He's coming off of two consecutive wins. It was a technical draw against Zach Walters. Zach Walters bleeding profusely from inside his mouth, and his corner stopped, and they went to the cards, and ended up, he ended up winning that fight on a technical draw. And then he's coming off a one-run knockout over Etienne Whitaker, and that was in the first round. So Byron Mitchell still able to bang with the best of them. And Benny, for Shumanoff, too, he's taking a chance and away with this guy. Even though he took the fight on short notice, he's going to be tested because this guy's a former world title uh, holder. He beat uh, uh, Frankie Lyles back in 89 up in Massachusetts uh, with uh, uh, winning the 168-pound title there. And then uh, he lost the title later to Bru uh, Bruno Girard. Uh, in France in a disputed loss. Uh, he took the title back from Girard and uh, he also won uh, the WBA title uh, at 168 pounds by stopping Manny Siaka uh, and then he defended that title a couple of times against Siaka and Julio Cesar Green. So this guy is a uh, stern and very, very good fighter. He's lost the title by split decision then to Sven Otke in Germany. But uh, that's no disgrace when you go to Germany. You've got to knock a guy out to win. Absolutely. And that was a fight that I, even Calzaghe, I remember in the interview after this fight with Byron Mitchell after Calzaghe saying he got robbed of that particular fight. You know, he watched that very intently because he knew he was going to have to fight him. And that's the thing. That was a great performance that Byron Mitchell had to me, the best one. And that was a great second round. He lost that fight in the second round. But nevertheless, a great, great second round. Shumanoff can do a lot of things. He can box and punch. Uh, uh, Steve Rollins is trying to train him to be a professional style fighter and he's developing all the time but this kid that had such an extensive amateur background really learning the the pro game is he's uh, trying to double with that jab a lot of a lot of difficulties you know for this kid concentrating on this fight with all the rain that they had today there was talk that it might be postponed here in Kazakhstan and his brother kind of took over uh, all of the matters to make sure that the fight went on. But a lot of distractions for this kid to fight in his homeland, coming back here from Las Vegas and uh, uh, fighting a, such a good opponent as Byron Mitchell. Well, you know, that's always a problem. Even, you know, whatever sport you play, and I, I played in the NFL, and I always had trouble coming home because everybody wanted tickets, and they wanted free tickets. So that's one of the things that I'm sure he was flooded with those type of requests. But what a great relationship with that team, that KZ Promotions, Beboot, and Shingas. Shingas, who pretty much takes over towards the last part coming up to the fight when uh, Beboot's just been in training. Sort of an even first round as the bell ends round number one. Ten rounds with Epifanio Mendoza, and then 12 rounds with Montel Griffin. So that's, a, that's an amazing feat. To me, I, I just love the way this guy is going about his career. To right off the bat, let's find out what we got. Don't wait around. Don't balloon up a record at 25-0 and 0, and then find out you can't fight. This guy is right there at seven fights. He's already fighting the second world champion right here in Byron Mitchell. Well, here he is. He's setting up his uh, right hand with his jabs. Mitchell knows what he's doing in there, too. He's trying to unload uh, or get in a position to unload a big right hand. He had to lose a, a, a couple of pounds, and he's still heavier uh, than Shumanoff. But he had the long trip over here, but he's certainly ready to fight because, as I mentioned, he's a guy that stays in shape all the time. So Byron uh, taking a nice payday to come over here. And he would like to go back with a win and, and stop this undefeated kid, Shumanoff. 
But Shumanov wants no part of that, especially in front of this crowd here in his hometown of uh, uh, Shimkent here in Kazakhstan. But I tell you what, though, if he keeps loading up with titles, he's going to need all 650,200 people to live here to hold up all the different titles in the ring right there. And you can see that the, the part of Mitchell, I describe him as a, as a counterpuncher. That's what he wants to do. And that's the thing you see Shumanov right here executing an excellent plan planned out by Steve Rollins to just fight from the outside to work behind that jab and wait for his opportunity. I like to see uh, Beboot step up into that jab a little bit more because sometimes he faints with it and just sticks it out there. As you see, he's hanging the left hand low right now and trying to almost suck a Mitchell in so he can unload the right hand. That, that was his idea behind it. I know what he's doing, but he's hanging it low. He seems to have the hand speed enough to get it up, and he, he's got a real good idea what he wants to do in there under the tutelage again of Steve Rollins. And there's the right hand that caught the left side of the head of Byron Mitchell and snapped the head that time. So if he continues to land flush shots like that, you see Byron hanging his left hand down a little bit, too. He's got to get that up and protect himself and, and start jabbing with the left hand as well. Shumanov giving a good movement. Gives him the left shoulder. Back to the right. He steps to his right. Now back to his left, showing that he's uh, all the experience that he got in the amateurs. But Byron Mitchell, by the same token, he wants to counter. He's not able to because of that movement that Shumanov has given him right now. And Shumanov, very quick hands. But the other thing that's going to surprise you is if you look at his record, the knockdowns have come both from the left and the right hand. So equal power from both sides. Good right hand right there by Shumanov. Yeah, Shumanov beginning to land some heavier blows. And you wonder uh, just how much of this Byron can take. Byron not throwing a lot of shots. I gave Shumanov the first round. And Shumanov even having a better second round with just 10 seconds to go in this second round. Shumanov looking very, very good here as he lands the body shot and the bell ends round two. Fastest rising prospect on the planet. That wicked right hand straight down the pipe. Landed right there by Baby Chubin Chub Chub off against Byron Mitchell. All right, so we're set to go with round number three. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Benny Ricardo. Our principals, Beboot Shumanov. He's the local Kazakhstan fighter fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, taking on the former two-time world champion Byron Gata Mitchell from Ozark, Alabama, living now in Orlando, Florida. And his Beboot, who has decided to turn it up just a notch here in round number three. He'd like to take this guy out. He's got the same judges here as uh, we're judging these unanimous decision win over Montel Griffin right here at this very stadium. But he wants to make this one definitive is what he's telling everybody uh, leading up to this fight. And that's what he's trying to do in the early going with uh, Byron Mitchell. And he's Mi moving very, very well, Colonel. Good foot movement. And he's, again, he's working behind that. Oh, what right hand. And now all of a sudden he just appears to be a lot quicker all of a sudden. Yeah, well, Mitchell's not throwing a lot. He, he might, might be drained a little bit from the weight loss that he had, maybe a little bit from the trip. But one thing for sure is he's not as active as uh, uh, Beboot. And the reason for that is Beboot has given him a lot of footwork, a lot of movement, and Mitchell can't get set. He can't get off with this guy. Yeah, and, and that's got to frustrate a fighter because, you know, you want to come in there. You want to come in there, and you can't touch this guy. You can't hit what keeps on moving and constantly out of that kill zone. Comes into that kill zone, then backs up. And always flicking that left. Beboot now waiting for him to come in, try to sucker him in, and he catches him with a nice left hook. He rolls the shoulders back and forth, almost inviting uh, Mitchell to come in. Mitchell, the former two-time world champ, tries to get him in the corner and finally gets a jab out there. He starts to throw some bunches, but right back is uh, Shumanov. Shumanov knows what he's doing in there. And you notice, Benny, too, he's up on his toes when he moves, and then he sits down on his heels and gets ready to throw hard bunches. Boom, he loaded that one. And see, doubling up on those shots, doubling up, showing the tremendous hand speed. 
But this guy doesn't fight like an amateur, like a longtime amateur. He fights like a pro. Well, that's, that's again, is the coaching from Steve Rollins, who's been around the block a few times, too. Uh, not only training some terrific fighters in uh, Australia, but uh, now uh, making his base camp in uh, Las Vegas, where Shumanoff has set up his base, too. And the way Shumanov stands there, he's almost like begging you to go ahead, throw the left. I'm going to drop my left. Throw me the right. Throw me the right. And he's all set to counter behind that. And again, great confidence in his own speed to be able to hit Mitchell afterwards. 40 seconds to go, and this is the third round from Shimkent in Kazakhstan. Kajimukhen Stadium, the home stadium of Shumanov, and he loves putting on this show, and he's catching Mitchell coming in, and this is exactly his fight plan to try to sucker him in, and Mitchell not punching his way in. Mitchell's got to start throwing some right hands, or it's going to be a long night for him, and a long night for a boxer is a short night usually. Exactly, and especially when he's coming in with his head that way, and Shumanov now planting that right hand right at the ear of Mitchell. Byron standing right in front of him, not giving the dipsy doodle that uh, he did when he was uh, the great champion. Closing seconds now. This is the third round. This is a terrific round again for Beboot Shumanov. Set to go to the fourth round of the scheduled 12 round IBA light heavyweight championship fight featuring Beboot Shumanov to the left of your screen in the black trunks. Just took a pretty good shot from. Uh, Byron Mitchell in another right hand. Some of the best shots that Byron's been able to get through here. And that's what I was expecting at Byron Mitchell, to come out here and jump on him right off the bat. I remember his fights against Manny Siaka. That was the one where he dropped Siaka in the ninth and 12, dropped him in the, in the second. His rematch in the very first round, also dropping Joe Calzaghe in the second. That's the type of fight that Byron Mitchell I thought was going to bring here. But Shumanov just too, too slow, too strong, too quick. Now you look at that, Benny, you see... I mean, Byron landed one shot, and then Shumanov made him pay. Then that time, he landed another shot, too. But Shumanov is in such great shape, he's able to gobble it up. But he answers with so many shots right back. Here's Byron finally up on his toes, trying to jab his way in and fight like Benny said he would. And, and, and now uh, Shumanov loads up the right hand, blasts that off the side of the head, trying to set Mitchell up for a big, big shot. Well, I think Shumanov now realizing, too, that Byron Mitchell, I mean, he, those punches are not going to be a problem for him. He's pretty much walking right through those shots by Mitchell. And again, that's a big-time puncher. Well, Byron Mitchell, who has been in against some of the top fighters in the world at the light heavyweight division, also the super middleweight. Now you see Shamu just, just kind of baiting him, baiting him. Beboot has things going his way because he has no fear of Mitchell. Mitchell is walking in sometimes. He's not jabbing. At the opening portion of this round, he jabbed his way in and was much more successful. But he, he almost takes a step before he jabs, and Shumanov can time his counterpunch. Look at this. He's right back with a left hook to the body. Now he wants to land the right hand upstairs as Byron is skipping forward. And if you time that, you can land the right hand right on top of the jaw of uh, Mitchell as he comes in. And that's what Shumanov, I'm sure he's picked it up because in spite of the fact he's only in his eighth professional fight, he's had a ton of experience as an amateur. This kid is out of fight. Absolutely. And Steve Rollins doing a good job because he's teaching him how to attack the body. And that's something you don't see that much in the amateur, which has pretty much turned into a pitter-patter type of contest because of the computer scoring system. But look at him now. He's now, he's got his base of power planted and launching some power. So good right hand. Well, he really wants to land some shots here, and he's doing exactly that. As he has got Mitchell in a bit of trouble here. Look at that right hand. Left hook, a real good right hand. Mitchell almost ready to go. Steve Smoger watching him very closely. He pulls the uh, human off back, and he he's looks like he's him giving right him now. a standing eight count. Yeah. It looks like you, but you know what it is, Benny? It's not a standing eight count. He fell into the ropes. He fell into the ropes. And that is the same as a knockdown. So we've got to remember that in scoring this round. When the ropes hold you up, that's scored as a knockdown. And that's what he was counting. And, and now look at this. This fight's not going to last much longer. He's all over him now. Landing big shots. Smoke is looking in to stop this fight, and he should. As soon as he gets a shot, he'll stop this fight. Look at these. Uppercuts. Right hand again. Unanswered shot. About 10 or 12 unanswered shots here. Look at Jumanoff. Loading up. There's the uppercut, and that's it. It's all over. Steve Smogan does step in. He was looking for an excuse. I want to make that clear what happened here now. He got hit. He fell into the ropes. And that was not a standing eight count. It was a situation where it was actually ruled as a knockdown. And he counted him uh, up to eight. 
But when he came off the ropes, he was out on his feet, and Shumanov jumped all over. Here's the replay of it. Yeah, because Steve Smoger made the decision that those ropes were keeping him up. Amazing right here in the part of Byron Mitchell. What heart, because he has taken some unbelievable shots. I mean, rocking that head back and forth, but still would not go down. Would not go down. And look at those shots. Those are flush right on the right there, right on the ear. And again, those are the ones that just rock your balance. And if you ever have, want to have any kind of problems with balance, just do something to your ear. And, but sure enough, he was able to go ahead and stay up. But Babu Chumanov now gets his eighth win as a professional sixth knockout. The fireworks go off, and let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Smith, to make this official. They're really celebrating here in Kazakhstan. The contest, your winner. Still unbeaten, 8-0 with six KOs, and the new IBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Babe Chumanov! Well, of course, Benny, this is huge for Babe Chumanov here in his his home country, in spite of the fact that he's moved his camp and are fighting out of Las Vegas in the look at the way he finishes this moment, two-time world champ. And that's the mark of a great pro. Champion of the WO Asia Pacific. He's a very patient in the way he was going about it. Not just quitting, but actually looking exactly where he's going to land those shots. Byron Mitchell, great, great heart. But again, this is a young man, 25 years of age, with tremendous power, tremendous preparation, and tremendous passion for the sport of boxing, really got himself ready for this fight. And again, gets another title now, the IBA light heavyweight title. So he's just loading up on titles, one belt after another. And what an inspiration, Colonel, for his countrymen. 10 of his countrymen fought at the last Olympics in Beijing. The biggest names being guys like Sergei Sapiev, Baki Sanzik Bakir, Baki I mean, great, great fighters. And this guy is a tremendous inspiration for this country. Well, I'm glad you had to say those names the <laughs> it, it's been a test for us tonight, I'll tell you. And it oh, was a terrific test for Babu Chumanov, who uh, certainly rose to the occasion as the fireworks go off. This is the first uh, championship fight here, and this is a huge night as his dad comes in to see him and congratulate him as you look at the IBA official who uh, put his signature on the glove when it was wrapped. And that's very important that the official see the gloves. And there's the uppercut that eventually ended the fight. But prior to that, there were five or six in the, in the last flurry as you're watching it here before Steve Smoger steps in. But before that, he had fallen into the, the, the ropes with Mitchell and he came off the ropes and was in big trouble. So that's the story. It was Shumanov, a big win over Byron.